and thank you for joining today. I welcome you all to IP Innovative Training and Support Program, in which we'll be discussing about step-to-step -step guide for becoming a peer reviewer. Before starting, let me give, give you a brief intro about our company. IP Innovative is a leading publisher of books and scholarly journals in the field of medical, dental, nursing, pharmacy, life sciences, and other multidisciplinary as well. This session is peer reviewer training and support. In this session, we'll be discussing about overview of peer review, roles and responsibilities, ethics and benefits of joining as a peer reviewer. Let me give a brief introduction of myself first. Myself, Shrishti Chaudhary, working as a convenier with innovative training and support. I am associated with scientific journal management, quality and development. I have done my master's in biotechnology and have an overall experience of around 2.5 years in publishing industry. In this meeting, we have two speakers with us. Speaker one is Dr. Satish Mothu, assistant professor in Department of Orthopedic Government Medical College, Jindigul in Tamil Nadu. Uh, I welcome you, sir, in the meeting. He is an expert personality in orthopedic and rheumatology field with background of editorial board member in many national and international journals. And he is also associated with IP International Journal of Orthopedic and Rheumatology. Then our speaker too is Dr. Uma Hariharan. Uh, she is Associate Professor of Anesthesiology in Dr. Ram Lohia Hospital and Atal Vihari Vajpayee Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. She is also one of the renowned personality in medical field and having a strong background in peer review. She is editorial board member in our Indian Journal of Clinical Anesthesia. I welcome both of our speakers in our meeting. So uh, let me give a brief, yeah. So this is today's session, peer reviewer training and support program. In this session, we have three, we have divided this session into three parts. So once again, I welcome you all to IP Innovative Peer Reviewer Training and Support. Uh, we are excited to share our thoughts on step-to-step -step guide for becoming a peer reviewer. Let's embark on this exciting journey together. In this session, we have uh, like Dr. Uh, Dr. Satish Muthu will be starting with how to become a peer reviewer, types of peer review roles and responsibilities. Then speaker two, Dr. Uma will be explaining how to review an article, ethics in peer review and benefits of becoming a reviewer. Then speaker three, myself is there and I'm exp I'll explain researchers profile in PRP and how to join as a reviewer. So uh, this is our first slide. In this slide, uh, in this whole presentation, we have divided our timings like in four slots. So we have pre-review, review invitation, invitation acceptance, and post-review. So it's like that. In pre-review, we'll be explaining you review overview, how to review an article, what are the benefits of reviewing, and all such things. Then once a person is receiving an invitation, how the invitation will come to the inbox of reviewer, and what things a person need to consider while accepting or while declining a particular invitation. Then if the person is accepting the invitation, what criteria a person need to follow, what ethics should be there, how to review an article practically. Then after completion of review, how to submit the comments post review and what should be the decision on the paper. So this first whole, now let me hand over this presentation to uh, our first speaker, Dr. Muthu. So sir, please start with your turn. Yeah. Thank you for the warm note of introduction. We will start with the first part. So as explained earlier, this talk is being uh, divided into pre-review, review invitation, invitation acceptance and what to do after a review. So I will be dealing with the basics of being a peer reviewer and its advantages and its responsibilities that falls with the job. So first, what is a peer review? So peer review is nothing but evaluation of a scholarly work of an author by a group of people who are considered as peers because they have the same level of competency as that of the author and work in the same field. This is the system that has been used to assess the quality of the work that is being published in the article in the journals so that it is validated before it is published and communicated to the other peers in the field. So this is peer review. So what are the types of peer review that is existing? 
one stringent system is double blinded peer review where in this type of review neither the reviewer nor the author knows each other so it will be blinded for both the author so author does not know who is the reviewer and the reviewer also will not know who is the author of the manuscript he is receiving and this is the most unbiased system uh, existing so that it is blinded for both the persons the other type that is existent in many journals is single blinded peer review system here the author will not know who is the review who is reviewing his paper whereas the reviewer will be knowing the author who is being evaluated in his uh, invitation so this is being followed in many systems and the other one is the third one is open peer review where it is totally made transparent that both the reviewer and the author knows the credentials and the institutions and the individual authors who are presenting the paper for peer review both the reviewer knows the authors and the author also knows who are all the persons who have reviewed their work and given the comments for it so who all can join as a reviewer that is a question because any uh, person who is new to the field might think whether he is uh, qualified to be a peer reviewer or not so what are the necessities that is needed to become a peer reviewer so you need a uh, educational qualification in the field so that you are qualified enough to evaluate the uh, paper that is being presented to you so you must have some research experience to know the methodologies that are being utilized in the paper that is being submitted and sufficient expertise in the topic that is being presented and time you must have some adequate time quality time to be spent to review the paper and reply to it on a timely manner and must be responsible about the ethical ways in which the research is being conducted so what are all the systems that is available to recognize your work or like what are the peer reviewer recognition platforms here in ip we give a reviewer certificate for every review you perform or you have this web of science platform uh, which is being integrated with the publons where they give you this publon credits or the verified review uh, numbers that is being added to your profile or we have this researchers profile rpid where the researchers can account for their peer reviews that they have been performed and with the evolution in your editorial work uh, this peer review uh, experience will give you the skills and the scientific visibility and uh, uh, it acts as a learning platform where you climb up the ladder to become an editor of a journal or such kinds so what are the benefits in other words like you might get some credit points i will go from here credit points in the sense like it will add to your profile counts like uh, just in your author dashboard or a peer reviewer dashboard you might get some credits like so and so number of peer reviews have been performed by this reviewer so it adds the credibility of your peer reviewer work and a recognition among your peers peers that you are a recognized peer reviewer and awards from innovative is being given for outstanding peer reviewers who keep up to their responsibilities and it also provides you with the opportunity for getting access to cutting edge research that is happening in your field so that you get to know them before it is being published and at sometimes it might help you with new ideas which might help you to run new research work that help you in the promotion and success in your field and also offers for peer reviewers you have some uh, publication discounts like apc waivers and stuffs like that which might also help you uh, out when you are making a publication of your own so what are the roles that a peer reviewer uh, plays so they have the access to amazing opportunities like network building first of all in case of open peer review system you have access to all the authors they you know who are the authors their email ids and all their contacts so if you think their research work is in line with your current research you can use it as a platform to build your network so it is a network building platform and also a knowledge sharing platform where you can have access to all the latest research that is being conducted in your field and it also helps to enhance your professional standards having uh, access to quality published content and you also play a role to ensure the impactness and the integrity of the work that is getting published in your field so what are the responsibilities that a peer reviewer holds so a uh, peer reviewer must ensure that you are reviewing articles in the area of your expertise and you must provide a complete and in-depth comments to the submitted papers and time is a critical factor because this uh, gets reflected in the uh, credentials of the journal that they are more timely in their peer review system so that you will get a response within a stipulated time 
for every paper that is being submitted to their editorial system. And it also, you must also participate in providing new ideas and suggestions to improve the journal workflow. So what are the major responsibilities? If you can split them, you can see like it's again like a timely review, expert evaluation to keep uh, the work that is uh, submitted for peer review to be a confidential one. And you must give some valuable feedback to the authors, make sure that it is ethically sound and a fair review without any partiality and a proper communication, uh, like the wordings in which you put your comments must be in a constructive way. And it must it will provide you with chances for continuous learning. So coming to timely review, reviewers are provided with a specific time duration in which uh, a peer review comments has to be submitted. Some uh, journals will provide you with the time slots for your own choice. Like in IP, we uh, give three time slots, like a week, a two weeks, or a month. Uh, it, uh, it is up to the choice of the peer reviewer to choose the time slot in accordance to their uh, availability. And it requires completing the review process within the chosen time frame. Whatever the time frame you chose, you make sure you stick to it and make your make yourself available on that time and finish your review process and submit your comments on a timely manner. Next is expert evaluation. So whatever the work you do in peer review must be a most uh, critical review of the paper that is being given to you and make sure you do an in-depth evaluation of their methods, of the results that they are presenting and make sure it is a valid one and it is uh, not a repetition of work that is already there or it's some, adds something to the literature that is existing. So that make sure you are you have done an expert evaluation. Confidentiality, then uh, because the content that is being shared to you is a confidential uh, information of the work of the authors before it is getting published. So you must not uh, communicate or share their content to other uh, peers without the uh, knowledge of the authors. So peer reviewers are obliged to respect the confidentiality uh, because every document that is shared is confidential and uh, they must evaluate the work by keeping very few entities in priorities like the manuscript should be fitting properly to the journal and the confidentiality is always maintained. Coming to the feedback that is being given to the authors, peer reviewers must provide a detailed valuable feedback and it must be very clear in simple language, it must be precise to the point and it must be constructive. So it should not offend or it should not be in a destructive manner. It need not only be in the criticizable manner, but instead it must add to the value of the article that is being peer reviewed and your comments must constructively improve the quality of the article that is being presented for publication. What are the ethical integrity issues that should be kept in mind? You must focus on publication ethics like a plagiarism or a slice, salami slicing or whatever it is. You must make sure the subject that you are peer reviewing is ethically intact, uh, like the conflict of interest, informed consent, plagiarism, data manipulation. Everything must be kept in mind while looking into ethical integrity of the manuscript that is being peer reviewed. Next, coming to the fair review on impartiality. In case of blinded peer reviews, it is not a problem. Whereas in case of open peer review policies, we, we are being informed of the author's institution, the author's names and everything. So you must be fair enough that even if you know the authors for yourself in person, you make the work very uh, precise and impartial so that uh, the reviewer gives a fair comments on all the lacunae that is present in the submitted work. And it should be free from any professional or personal biases. Proper communication. So the reviewers can communicate to the journal handlers, editors in a constructive manner to seek any additional information if required. And the communication uh, that is being given to the authors and the editors must be in a constructive and effective manner. And a delay in communication or not responding to invitation on time uh, puts a bad name on the peer reviewer and it is not expected out of them. So this peer review gives you a chance for continuous learning. So the peer reviewers should engage in continuous learning to keep themselves updated on the work that is being done in their field. And being a peer reviewer is also an opportunity for continuous learning. Not only you need to be updated on your field to become a peer reviewer, being a peer reviewer is also an opportunity to learn from the field research. So this is about the basics of a peer reviewer. Now we will see how a review invitation will be sent and will be accepted before doing a peer review per se. So you'll be receiving a mail like this uh, from the editorial board or the editorial office stating that 
the so and so journal has been presented with a so and so topic paper and uh, you are uh, being enrolled as a peer reviewer and you, you are invited to review this manuscript so in such terms you might receive a mail where you have two options either to accept or reject and you will have a brief uh, abstract that will be presented at the bottom of the mail so you can have a glance into the work that is being presented make sure you are uh, you are the person who are who is right to review that paper and then if you find that you are the right person then you can click on the accept to review and you will be given with these time slots it depends upon the journal type some may have fixed time slots some will give you this uh, flexible time slots like in ip system we give this 5 days 10 days and 15 days time slots so depending upon your uh, work schedule you can decide which slot to choose and you give the sub uh, submit the review time so that you will get a reminder from in your mail again stating that this is the deadline for the review for this article that is being submitted to this journal something like that so this is the review invitation and the workflow that goes behind this review invitation so after receiving this invitation it is totally up to your choice whether to accept or reject it just for the sake of being a peer reviewer you need not accept everything so try to accept only things that are in your purview and being in the expectations of your field so only then it adds to your credibility so choose the time frame as per your availability the first what thing you will be doing is you first look into whether the article matches your field and uh, the time frame that you choose make sure you are available and make yourself uh, a peer reviewer within that time and do you have any conflicts while reviewing make sure you don't have any conflict of interest on the comments or the subject that is being peer reviewed if so you must mention them in the peer review report itself so that it makes an unbiased review so these are the things to consider while accepting the invitation proceeding to peer review so on a overall what is expected from you as a reviewer on the aspect of authors they expect a highlighted correction of their paper because they would have already done multiple rounds of review to correct their paper but peer reviewing is a chance for them to make a final correction of their paper with the minor flaws that is being uh, sent to you for peer review so you are supposed to give a highlighted correction of the work that is submitted give a descriptive constructive feedback and you you are supposed to assist in improving the errors Uh, so it is not uh, mandatory to point out only the errors but also give them the opportunity to correct them and improve the quality of the article that is presented this is expected from the authors whereas from the editors editors need you to summarize the report in a constructive manner in a simple term in simple language and you must make sure the review is very fair and on the ethical point and on the aspect of the readers who are reading those uh, peer reviewed journals that is being published they need a clear research that is being conveyed to the audience with adequate details with trusted information and data because you are the one who is uh, acting like a traffic signal whether to accept or reject that uh, work that is being presented for publication so you are supposed to be unbiased and give the valuable judgment so that it adds to the literature so this is the first part now i hand over this presentation to dr Uh, before handing over to Dr. Uma, let me have our first poll question. Thank you so much, Dr. Satish Murthy, for this wonderful presentation. Uh, I hope that all the viewers and all the readers are now able to join as a reviewer and now attain a good knowledge that how a person can join as a reviewer and what are the major roles and everything uh, in this peer review management system. So now let's have our first poll question. So the first poll question is launched now. And the question is about what incentivizes you most towards becoming a peer reviewer. So that is a question that is presented and the options given are either for advancing your knowledge or for your own professional development or as a collaborative opportunity or in a way to increase your communication skills. Which one do you think is key towards making you into a peer reviewer so we'll take some 30 more seconds to end this poll and give you what is the audience view of being a peer reviewer so there is a tight competition between 
advancing knowledge and professional development going hand in hand okay more than 100 options 100 poll uh, has been given yeah so professional development is more suitable answer for this question yeah. so let me hand over the presentation to dr uma haryan so this was the answer of the question that uh, what incentivize you most towards becoming a peer reviewer professional development was the most chosen answer now dr uma you can start from your turn like how to review an article and what are the ethics in uh, peer review and what are the benefits of joining as a peer reviewer with ip innovative or with any of the uh, like uh, industry a uh, very good afternoon uh, to all of you and i really thank innovative publications for this wonderful opportunity it is in fact a great opportunity to learn in the process of teaching so i am extremely grateful uh, thank you so much and let me just start sharing my screen so is my screen visible yes, yes ma'am it is visible yeah yeah so uh, the initial thank you dr muttu for covering the initial part of the peer reviewer training in a very lucid and extremely beautiful way uh, you have made my work very easy so now uh, what are the steps after you accept the reviewer invitation and how basically you will be doing the review of a particular article is what i am trying to uh, make it uh, clear to you so uh, after you accept uh, once a reviewer invitation is sent to you and you accept the reviewer invitation what exactly you need to do what are the things to consider how to review what are the criteria and what are the ethical principles because you see you cannot be reviewing every article the reason being you may not be an expertise in a particular subject and hence you are actually not supposed to review that particular subject articles in addition if you are related or having any particular relation with the authors who have submitted their work then also ethically you are not supposed to review so there are several other considerations which i'll be coming up in the next few slides so reviewing an article is a scholarly in, in any scholarly and academic journal is a very important and crucial step which helps maintain the quality of research the review process is what makes a particular journal the uh, most sought after journal or having a higher impact process or higher impact factor before starting you must read the whole article thoroughly and understand that the paper is within your purview and always check whether it is matching with the aim and the scope of the journal or not for example if it is a journal of anesthesia and you are getting an article which is related to let us say uh, neurology or let us say uh some other uh, branch which is not at all related to anesthesia then the article itself does not fit into the scope of the journal so in most instances these articles are rejected by the editor himself or herself and then they may not even reach the reviewer's desk but if at all they reach it is the responsibility of the reviewer to bring that to highlight so that the journal scope and aims are met with so now this flow chart is a very uh, lucid way to explain how exactly a journal peer review process works mm -hmm. so as you can see once an author submits a manuscript to any particular journal the editorial office will do a scrutiny a thorough scrutiny and inform the author whether that particular article is within the scope of the journal and whether that requires further peer reviewing or not once it is initially evaluated it is then considered worth to worthy to then pass it on to the peer reviewers now the peer reviewers what they do is they will select as per their areas of expertise mentioned in the uh, journal uh, website or to the editor and the particular editor will assign uh, peer reviewers as per their expertise and then the editor decides the next steps whether to 
uh, whether to send it to the reviewer or not. Now, once it is sent to the reviewer, the reviewer will evaluate it over a period of time. The uh, time duration is fixed. You have to do it in a prioritized manner without delaying because that will affect the publication, that will affect the uh, patient's level of the authors and the editors as well. So the peer reviewers are basically either asked to agree or reject that particular uh, article once they have accepted for reviewing. And if they are accepting, then they have to give their comments for improvement or revision as the case may be in case of that any particular article. So this is what the, the this is what the, the expert uh, experts they agree. They send the reviewer report to the editor, and the editor decides whether it has to be accepted or not. And once it is accepted, the paper uh, is returned to the authors, or even if it is rejected, it is returned to the author, and the authors are asked to revise as per the comments of the reviewers so that the paper becomes better. The paper becomes in a manner which can be published in a standard academic journal. And the authors then revise that particular article, incorporate all the changes, and then submit to the journal again, which is again evaluated by the editor and again sent to the peer reviewers. And they finally agree that yes, whatever changes or modifications they have asked for, the, the, uh, the, uh, the authors have done and communicated back to the uh, editor uh, through the journal uh, login page. And then the editor finally decides whether the article is acceptable or it is rejected. Whatever it is, it is informed to the author. And once it is accepted, the author uh, is notified about the acceptance of the article, then the copy editing and other formalities and pre-publication formalities are done and then the article is published. If further revision is required, then again the uh, revision process is communicated to the um, authors and they are then notified of the changes required. Okay, so this is a very important uh, flow chart which you all must remember uh, regarding the peer, peer review workflow. Now coming to another very important uh, slide in this presentation and that is this uh, particular um, slide. So number one, the first and foremost, the aims and scope of the journal we have to find out and make sure that the article matches that. Then secondly, the significance for that particular journal, whether it is low priority, medium priority, or high priority article for that particular journal. For example, if the particular uh, manuscript is something uh, related to some innovation or some, let us say in an anesthesiology journal, if it is related to a new airway device, which has been tested and it, it is a research article and it is something new that the readers will enjoy and that will improve the uh, journal's uh, uh, reach, outreach to the uh, audience, then definitely it is a very high priority article and the reviewers would try to incorporate the revisions which they require and communicate it early to the editor and then finally to the authors. So the significance for the journal is important to understand. Then the third point is understanding the methodology. For example, whether it is a randomized control trial, whether it is a retrospective, uh, retrospective study or a prospective study, whether it is just an observational study or a cohort study. So all these kinds of methods which have been used for doing the particular research or article is then looked into. Then the quality and originality. For example, nowadays, a uh, lot of uh, repetitive uh, research or repetitive articles are being submitted to the journals. For example, if I'm doing uh, research on, let us say, diabetes mellitus, then the uh, authors may decide to uh, submit earlier done research on that particular subject and submit it in a different manner uh, for getting published. So those things have to be looked into that it has to be the original work and it has to be high quality work. You cannot 
uh, improve the standards of a journal by compromising on the quality. So quality scores over quantity. Submit the comments. Now, once you've assessed the uh, article for uh, all these uh, aspects, you write down in the uh, journal uh, web page and submit your comments. And remember, it has to be a constructive feedback. You should never give any destructive criticism because that can demotivate the authors and it can result in various problems. So always give a constructive feedback and hope that the authors will take it positively and correct and submit. An evaluation of ethical integrities. So uh, basically the study should have been passed by the institutional uh, review board as well as the ethical committee and it should always be uh, the proper uh, way of registry of trials should be followed and all the ethical integrities have to be taken care of. for example patient consent parental consent and any other permissions which are required have to be taken you must focus on the strength as well as the weakness of that particular uh, study Otherwise, it will be difficult to summarize your comments for submitting on the journal. So uh, once you submit your comments, please divide, you can divide your uh, the peer reviewer comments into strengths and weaknesses and improvements suggested so that the authors can have a great idea of what exactly is needed for improvement of the manuscript. So it is very important to remember these particular steps. So these are the basic steps. Another very important slide is you must look into all these headings in the article, start, starting from the title, the abstract, the keywords, the background, the methodology, the results, the discussion, and the references. So the conclusion and references. So in the title, you must be very sure that the title is catchy. It is appropriate and it reflects the study design. It reflects what the hypothesis or what the research article is trying to portray. Then the abstract. The abstracts are basically of two types, structured and unstructured. For uh, original articles, it has to be a stru structured abstract which should summarize what exactly you are trying to do in that particular study. And in uh, non-original uh, research articles, for example, case reports, uh, or uh, let us say editorials, then the abstract has to be an unstructured abstract. So again, it has to uh, succinctly summarize what exactly you want to convey in that particular manuscript. Keywords, now always use M-A-S-H keywords in your manuscripts so that they can be easily found on the net and it should focus on the manuscript you are describing. For example, you are trying to um, publish a study on let us say HIV and you are putting keywords which are absolutely not related to HIV. So that is not going to help you uh, help your manuscript. So that is what is important. So be relevant. It has to be relevant and focus on the manuscript on that particular aspect of HIV you want to highlight. So those things should be there in the keywords. Background in the manuscript should describe the previous and the present and the future of that particular uh, study and the significance. Why you are doing it? Why is it required? What is the lacuna in knowledge which you are trying to fill up? And the study methods are sound and appropriate. They need to be assessed. If they are not sound and appropriate, then again, there are higher chances of rejection. Now, the results. Now, when you come to the results, the results should, the manuscript should meet the requirements of the biostatistics. So all the statistical analysis, the p-value, the standard deviation, everything has to be properly mentioned and uh, basically analyzed by the reviewer that whether a proper statistical method has been utilized for conveying your results or not. And this checklist you need to do for every article. So continuing with the checklist, let us come to the discussion. Does the manuscript interpret the findings adequately and appropriately? So discussion is also, I would say, one of the most important aspects of any particular uh, article because that will tell you what exactly the article is trying to improve in scientific literature. Then coming to illustration and tables, the labels, the figures have to be labeled with arrows and numberings and asterisks and the abbreviations have to be 
fully expanded and the legends of those tables and uh, pictures have to be uh, uh, engraved in the manuscript for easy understanding and references. You see, each and every journal follows different referencing styles, but the most common one, which we generally follow and agree and accept is the Vancouver style. There are several other styles uh, which are uh, followed by different journals. So that need to be checked that the journal for which you are reviewing follows which referencing pattern. Manuscript organization and presentation now comes to the English language, the grammar, the punctuation marks and other aspects of the uh, presentation which need to be checked. And coming to the methods, whether this article is of interest to the education research community or not is a very pertinent question and this has to be answered. And an ethics statement has to be seen. The ethics statement is generally given uh, by the submitting authors. Does the manuscript meet the requirement or not? So all these things have to be checked before arriving at your decision. There are several lesser important considerations for a reviewer like minor spelling mistakes, grammatical mistakes and referencing style, which actually should not deter you uh, which actually should not prompt you to reject an article, but rather tell the suggestions of improvement to the authors and make them do the corrections and get the article accepted if it is of interest to the scientific community and has a robust research background. Now, coming to ethics in peer review, now this is a very, very important topic because you should never compromise on ethics in any article review. The editorial office should maintain the confidentiality as a reviewer is not allowed to mention their name. And peer review process is also confidential. Please do not share the manuscript and its process during the publication to your colleagues or other people. In a bit, publication asks the reviewers to inform the journal editor if they hold a conflict of interest to determine the review report or not. So if you have a conflict of interest, please disclose so that there are no, there is no ambiguity at the end. Now, coming to COPE, key points for COPE by peer review ethics. Uh, peer reviewers, they play an important role in ensuring the integrity of the scholarly record and the peer review process depends to a large extent on the trust and willing participation. So it has to be a complete and wholesome willingness of the peer reviewers to do a thorough reviewing of the manuscript without any bias and without any conflict of interest. So that is what is important for improving the journal impact factor and timely publication. So journal has an obligation to provide transparent policies and reviewers have an obligation to conduct reviews in an ethical and accountable manner. And clear communication between the journal and the reviewer is very important for this. And Again, the peer review for the purpose of these guidelines refers to the reviews provided on manuscript submissions to journals, but also includes reviews for other platforms that apply to public commenting that can occur pre and post publication. So this actually is very beneficial for the reviewers because they get a view uh, or they get publicity uh, about their qualifications, about their qualities of peer reviewing for scholarly journals. So reviews of other materials like preprints, grants, books and functions proceedings and registered reports and protocols and data also need to be, need to have uh, ethical framework. The model of peer review will also influence elements of publication process. Okay, so now let us come to the uh, importance of being a peer reviewer and uh, the benefits. Actually, I would say that the benefits outweigh the troubles involved in reviewing. So if you have this positive frame of mind, you'll be able to do a good peer review and able to establish your name in the reviewing society. Enhancing critical thinking and analytical skills. Your skills of analyzing a particular manuscript will improve how to go about reviewing, you will become clear so that when you yourself submit a manuscript later on, will not commit those mistakes. Enhancing research skills. By reading various manuscripts, you will know that what are the kinds of research people are doing in your particular area of speciality and what kind of research methodologies and statistical methods they are using for arriving at the results. Networking and collaboration opportunities are immense in peer reviewing uh, of journals. And this is actually a priceless prize for, becoming a, for being a peer reviewer. 
improving the writing and communication skills i would admit that once i started doing peer reviewing my styles of communication and writing skills have improved tremendously because i have read so many articles and found out what was exactly lacking in those particular articles which resulted in their rejection and i have tried to inculcate the positive aspects of those articles so that my skills are also improved of course it's a major career development move it is actually an achievement and advancement of knowledge is definitely a great additional boon because you get to know more about that particular sub speciality of yours and you read more uh, to review it better professional development and recognition you definitely get peer review certificates by most journals and uh, they start recognizing your work and your dedication and that is a great professional development and of course you can uh, attend these peer reviewing training programs these are also part of um, professional development programs so the benefits are numerous enhancing the critical thinking and analytical skills this requires a thorough study of the research design data analysis and recommendations critical thinking and analytical abilities enable the research uh, advantages and disadvantages and offer helpful criticism get to learn more about the specialized subjects and research process and exposure to a variety of research topics methodology and approaches enables to have a deeper comprehension so the comprehension of the research skills is very important and growth in knowledge and research abilities empowering them to undertake more thorough and superior research is another added importance and advantage networking and collaboration opportunity this is i would say of immense value because the reviewers generally connect with the writers the researchers and other stalwarts in the field and subject matter experts so that their own reviewing process and their own career development is improved developing connections with other industry experts can also result in beneficial partnerships and sharing of ideas improving writing and communication skills as i already told you i am a live example to that reviewers can improve their writing and communication skills by giving constructive criticism and evaluate the research articles in a critical manner and provide your insight for a clear cogent cognitive manner so that the reviewing process is smooth and you also start to learn professional development and recognition the reviewers can improve their writing and communication skills and critically evaluate the research articles advancement of knowledge this is actually needless to say because if you are reviewing an article of your particular speciality you will definitely read more of that particular topic and then your knowledge will also improve so that i have also found in my personal experience to be immensely beneficial they this plays a key part in preserving the integrity of the published literature by assessing the caliber rigor and validity of research manuscripts comments and recommendations can help the authors to improve their work also their knowledge also improves so it is a bidirectional improvement in knowledge and nothing could be better than that career development yes uh, you are at the pinnacle of your career once you become a peer reviewer and because you are now assessing the work of others now that actually gives you a sense of achievement which is immeasurable so this definitely uh, helps in career improvement by enhancing knowledge visibility and skills it helps in promotional activities improve familiarity with the industry norms and enable the reviewers to gain the respect among academy now once you have done with your review what is to be done you need to summarize your points identify the strengths and weaknesses suggest the improvements uh, uh, to the authors and give all those things in writing to the editorial office to be passed on to the authors so that they can submit or resubmit a revised manuscript after incorporating all the suggestions which you have given so now comes the post review stage where you have to submit your comments after review so in this what you should do is as you can see here first of all you need to see whether you are accepting the paper or not so if you are accepting the paper in the present form you need to mark that 
then if you see that okay there are some minor uh, corrections which are required for example grammatical mistakes language errors or some minor changes in the sentences uh, which is required then you mark here except after minor revision now supposing you find that the article lacks some major aspects there are some major revisions which are required for improvement then you mark the third one that is except after major revision and supposing you find that the article is absolutely not suitable for that particular journal and then you don't find the article robust or up to the mark you can decide to reject the paper okay so after you decide on what you need to do among all these four options you need to attach one reviewed file if possible wherein you have done corrections in the word file which has been sent to you and upload it here choose file if you just click on that if it is saved in your laptop or desktop then it you can select the file and upload then your comments now here what you have to do you have to give constructive criticism or constructive comments for improvement and that you need to summarize and give it in a very concise manner you cannot be writing paragraphs and paragraphs so better to give in a very concise manner let us say in the form of points uh, 10 15 points you can give for improvement or corrections so that the author knows what to do and where to do and in the confidential remarks to the editor what you can do is you can write to the editor and say that look sir this article deserves publication but yes it deserves some major revision so please publish only if those concerns are addressed and if you at all decide to reject the article please inform the editor that sir no this article is not good it doesn't have the required quality and it has to be rejected so that is what is required uh, from a good peer review and then you have to do a grammar check so once you do a grammar check you can say whether it is excellent good fair or poor if it is poor and bad then the editorial office will communicate it uh, to the uh, authors and they will engage professional editing services and improve it because actually what happens is that in most journals the language of publication is generally english and in non english speaking countries it is extremely difficult to obtain a very good grammatically and all spelling is correct english language manuscript so these uh, things have to be kept in mind does the article match the aims and scope of the journal this is a very pertinent question which has to be answered either yes or no there is no ambiguity in that and is the article complete or not for example this uh, for if, if an author has submitted uh, an article where he has failed to mention the conclusions or the limitations of the study then it, you can say that this article is not yet complete the author may have forgotten to add that particular sub topic in his manuscript and submit so you can write that the article is not complete and mention it in the remarks to the editor and once you do yes or no in this you have to uh, click the submit comment button and once it is clicked it will go on to the uh, editorial office for further processing so the comment should be understandable to both the authors and the journal editors there should be no ambiguity in that and check always uh, go through the checklist which i uh, told you in the beginning to justify all the questions and then please mention the strength and weaknesses in a very polite and organized manner please don't be harsh and please don't be rude <clears throat> you see uh, you are after all reviewing a scientific manuscript right so you need to take care of the a uh, way in which you write and communicate it should be clear and concise and the clarity of the comments must be checked before submitting all right um before starting our next yeah. slide dr uma will yeah. be explaining how to review an article yeah. on the basis yeah. of yeah. dummy article so before yeah. that let me uh, have our second poll question yeah this is our second poll question so in the meantime our viewers or readers can check the question and can answer we'll be very happy to have your feedback on this particular question like what duration is ideal for reviewing an article is it 0 to 5 days it should be 5 to 10 days 10 or 15 days 
more than 15 days? Uh, actually, Shristi, madam, the poll question is probably not visible. Is it visible on the screen? Is my poll question visible? No, no, I have to unshare, then only it will be visible. Please hold on. Yeah, yeah. Just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have now uh, stopped sharing. So you can uh, post your poll question now. Yeah. You can now post your poll question. Now it will be visible. I would request the uh, participants to kindly wait. We are just trying to share the screen and uh, give you the poll question. Just a minute. Thank you. Please wait. Just wait for a few more seconds. There is some technical issue in the presentation. So just be online. Yeah, now I think all can see the question. What duration is ideal for reviewing an article? It should be zero to five days, five to 10, 10 to 15, and more than 15. So we are waiting for more responses. I think we received the maximum number of answers. So now I think I should end the poll and let me show the results to all. So second one was the most preferable answer like five to 10 days should be the uh, exact duration what a reviewer should choose and what a uh, like editorial office should give to review an article. Now, hand over the session again to Dr. Uma Hariharan. Ma'am, please go ahead with uh, reviewing an article. Means you are uh, like uh, showing how to review an article on the basis of a checklist, which you in, uh, have explained in the meeting. You are unmuted, please uh, uh, unmute. Yeah, yourself. thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. I'll start sharing my screen again. And I would demonstrate one uh, dummy article on one side and uh, the slides of uh, checklist on the other side so that you are able to understand the basics of peer reviewing so that uh, the end result is good enough. So I'll just start sharing my screen. Give me a uh, moment. Okay, so can you see uh, both the things? Uh, hello. Hello. Hello, yeah, yeah. We yeah can, can you see my slide as well yeah, as yeah. the dummy article? Yeah, properly visible to us. Now we can see both the slide part also and the dummy article as well. Now you can go ahead with reviewing the article and okay, uh, live it. Fine, fine. So... Uh, now, this is just a dummy article. Uh, please don't go into the nitty gritty details of the article. We have just chosen this uh, just to make you understand how about going, uh, how to go about peer review, right? So, now what is the first thing which comes to your mind when you get an article for peer review? The first and foremost should be, as I told you, 
the aims and scope of the article for the journal suitability for the journal second is the significance whether it is a significant article of importance to the journal or not so coming let us first address these two just by looking at the uh, article now this article has been uh, submitted to an anesthesia uh, journal and uh, this has come to you so what do you understand from the title the study of the effect of timing of pre operative administration of dexamethasone and ondansetron on post operative nausea vomiting following laparoscopic cholecystectomy a prospective randomized control trial so what do you feel about the article you have actually not gone further but ideally you should first go through the entire article and then form an opinion about it so i feel that yes this is an article which fits the aims and scope of the journal and it is a, it, it is an article of significance why do you feel it is an article of significance because it is going to compare two drugs of importance during uh, the perioperative care of any patient for prevention of poionv that is post operative nausea and vomiting which is very common following any surgery you see any surgery which you do under general anesthesia is fraught with this complication of post operative nausea vomiting so there have been several uh, decades of study to find out the ideal uh, anti emetic agent for pun we and the uh, study and the research still continues but yes we have a paraphernalia of drugs which are available and this is a study which is comparing dexamethasone with ondansetron for lap now coming to understanding the methodology now how you will understand the methodology it is a prospective randomized control trial so it is very clear they have left no ambiguity in that so it is a uh, prospective means it is going further randomized means it has been randomized and uh, it is a controlled trial so it is actually a robust study design now coming to uh, the strengths and the weaknesses now this you will know once you go through the entire manuscript that how the study has been done what are the results what, what are the diagrams what is the discussion like what are the conclusions like and then form an opinion and then look into the ethical integrity how will you look into the ethical integrity a proper uh, patient consent a proper uh, pro forma and a proper ethical committee approval and a institutional review board approval is available or not so these things you should look into and then give a constructive feedback and after all that please submit the comments now coming to the uh, checklist which i was you know uh, referring the title is the title appropriate i think the title is just okay because this is uh, going to tell you whether um, it is actually studying the effect of the timing of two different drugs not exactly the drugs the timing of administration of the drug whether you need to administer it immediately on induction or in between the surgery or immediately before extubation so that the timing there have been a very few studies regarding the timing so this is actually a good title the abstract now this since it is a research article you can see that here the abstract uh, is having a structured abstract right like the imrad pattern introduction aim material and methods results and conclusion so this is actually uh, having a good pattern of course it should have a discussion also which is lacking in this so you can ask the uh, authors to give a, a discussion uh, aspect in the imrad pattern as well then coming to the background so background is nothing but the introduction uh, which is there and in this they have uh, told about what is punv what is the incidence of punv what are the factors which increase the incidence of punv what uh, can be done to decrease the incidences of punv and what exactly is lacking in the literature regarding the treatment of punv so that they have explained it well and then coming to the material and methods so in material and methods they have clearly told that it is approved by the institutional ethics committee and what is the number of patients which they have selected what is the asa grade of those patients what is the age group of the patients which they have selected what are the inclusion and the exclusion criteria which they have taken for patient selection and how have they divided the patients into two groups the group a and the group b the group a um, dexamethasone and group b on cetron so what exactly uh, is uh, the uh, or l group c 
so this is what they have done so in group a dexamethasone is given 45 minutes before induction so it's a pre induction dose in group b ontincetron is given also pre induction but in group c 8 mg is given uh, just before induction this is 45 minutes and this is just before induction and in group d again the same 4 mg ontincetron is given just before induction so there is a time gap of 45 minutes from the time from all these groups so they have tried to compare the time duration of the uh, giving of anti emetic agent then coming to the this is the methodology which they have written and now coming to the result now in results what you need to do you need to compare the demographic data of the patients the baseline vital parameters any differences in the age groups and any other demographic differences which they have found and then they must be tabulated in proper bar diagrams or line diagrams and the uh, charts and the tables have to be checked for their authenticity and completeness and the p value has to be checked for knowing whether it is statistically significant or not between the groups so here they have uh, given all the uh, tables and the bar diagrams and charts and this seems to be a reasonable Uh, results section now coming to the discussion they have added the discussion and in the discussion also they have uh, highlighted about uh, what punv uh, is all about and the complications of punv and why uh, the study was important and what their findings uh, are important for the scientific community and how relevant it is and this is then uh, interpreted further uh, uh, so as to form a proper recommendation regarding the timing of prophylactic antiemetic agents so this is what uh, they have tried to discuss and arrive at a conclusion in the later section so uh, illustration and tables as i told you i have checked the references they will just come up and the conclusion and they have concluded that dexamethasone has a longer duration of action and better efficacy in comparison with ondansetron and the timing of administration of dexamethasone with reference to induction of anesthesia has no bearing on the incident so whether you give dexamethasone 45 minutes before induction or whether you give just before induction is of no use is of no significance or difference so that is what they have found out in the study and ondansetron appears to have a shorter duration of action and is associated with higher incidence of punv especially if the surgery is of longer duration and the timing of ondansetron is important uh, before surgery and it has a bearing on the incidence of vomiting and rescue antiemetic required so is it clear now so this is what is and here again they have mentioned about the financial support whether they have received or not conflict of interest and acknowledgments and this is very important that you need to acknowledge your uh, the people who have really helped you and supported you in doing the study and then the references so this is basically the uh, vancouver style referencing please check each and every reference for its completeness and referencing style and uh, the methodology also has to be robust and an ethical statement uh, by the uh, authors is also equally important please remember that a particular number of references is required by each journal for a particular category of article so for an original article maybe 20 to 25 references for a case report maybe 10 references so that you need to limit the number of references as per the journal requirement so that also you need to mention in your peer review report so the lesser important ones like the minor spelling mistakes and grammatical issues and referencing style uh, can be communicated and uh, the ethics of course have to be uh, looked into so that is it um, so i'll now uh, stop sharing my screen and uh, you can go ahead uh, with your poll question if you have thank you so much i hope uh, you all understood so this is a poll question third poll question from arin which of the following encompasses conflict of interest during peer review i think it was an easy one yeah <laughs> so let's we are give getting a few more seconds let's yeah. see more seconds let everybody answer the question then we'll be moving ahead with our next session um uh, actually some some people are saying it is not visible to them they are not able to see the question they are saying 
No, no, it is visible, ma'am, because we are getting the answers in the uh, questions. Okay, I mean, I think so there might be some <laughs> network issues or connectivity yeah, issues right there. Yeah. Because I have already stopped sharing my screen and yeah, uh, we got more than hundred polls done already. Okay, okay, great, great. So, uh, we are getting maximum requests for all of the above. Like, uh, if any of the author and corresponding author are uh, the if the manuscript is belonging to the same person who is like. Uh, reviewing then the other is being the same institution or in the department of the author and also it affects like if the author is relative of a peer reviewer it also affect the peer review uh, like uh, decision so all of the above is the uh, maximum answer yeah. we receive yes. yeah uh, thank you so much uh, thank you so much dr uma hariharan for this wonderful presentation and guiding us all for becoming a peer reviewer your paper reviewing was also amazing and will get an idea like how a beginner or how a person can review an article now i am going to start how to join with ip innovative as a reviewer or how a person if a new person is there uh, how the person can join with ip innovative as a reviewer so for that let me share my screen first I think my screen is now visible to all. Yes, it is visible. All right. So this is how to join as a reviewer with IP Innovative. IP Innovative manage peer review process with MPRP. This is our in-house build software that is manuscript peer review process. We handles all pre-publication services, editorial services, and post-publication activities by the single platform. Uh, once a manuscript is received by MPRP, it is coming to us, like to our journal handlers or to editorial assistant. We scrutinize the paper on the basis of plagiarism, on the basis of journal guidelines, or on some other factors as well. Then we assign the paper to the reviewers. So for this thing, let us have a brief uh, on the live, like how our MPRP system work. So very first, the website of our MPRP system is www.mprp.in. If a person is coming to our MPRP panel, it is looking like this. Like uh, this is a brief intro about MPRP. If at the end of the session, you must visit our website and can read the person who are interested in joining as a reviewer. Now uh, we have our 50 journals with MPRP means if anybody can want to submit the paper can submit can be submitted from here after that uh, if a person is coming like if a new reviewer is joining with us how the person can join as a reviewer for that the person first need to select the journal in which journal the person want to join as a reviewer for example i choose the journal of neuroscience okay then uh, I have one dummy account, like uh, from this account, I'll be registering uh, at NPRP. So one need to, it is reviewer type, like register type, how you want to register on NPRP. Then you need to set your password as per your choice. Now it is asking for all the details like this, like uh, your first name, suppose I am, then your last name, these are mandatory field. You need to fill these field at any post. Then you need to choose the country from which country you are. So if suppose uh, somebody is choosing India, then it's gender, then your state, your contact number, And you need to check this uh, and you need to agree all the terms and conditions and you're submitting. Now, now uh, the person joined as a reviewer with us. Now the person need to fill all the required details like the email ID for the journal, uh, what are the educational qualifications, what is the reviewing experience, in how many days you can review an article, like I'm choosing 11 to 20 days, uh, then it is asking for uh, 
uh, how many articles you can send, uh, we can send for reviewing to us. Like if somebody is choosing 15 to 40 articles. So this is your feedback. Like we'll be like appreciating if we'll be getting this, like uh, we'll be giving you articles on the basis of this only. Then for how many years you want to serve to editorial board, for example, three years I'm choosing the number of publications. If I have 12 publications, then date of birth, it is also a mandatory factor. Then ORCID ID as well. So it is like 16 digit, 12 digit code, a person need to fill the ORCID ID. If any suggestion is found there, you can write, uh, you need to choose your subject category. This is very important. Like if you are joining as a reviewer, you should uh, mention your subject category. What is your main subject? For example, nursing is the main subject. Then you need to choose the sub subject. Like in nursing, what subject is yours? Like if I'm choosing oncology, then specifically in oncology, what is your specialization or what is your area of interest? If I'm saying radiation oncology is my area of uh, expertise and hematology is my area of expertise, then I choose these two topics. Then I declare and uh, if somebody is interested in uh, like putting the profile picture can do so and can submit the request to join as a reviewer with the with this particular journal. Uh, so in this case, uh, this was an example like how a person can join as a reviewer. Uh, I didn't mention the right ORCID ID, so it is not showing like that. Uh, coming back to our presentation, this is like how MPRP uh, works. So if a person is submitting manuscript to the journal, what procedures we are following? So we are getting the manuscript, then editorial scrutiny happens, like initial evaluation as per the journal guidelines. Then editors remark like editorial scrutiny means we are checking the plagiarism. We are checking the journal guidelines again. Then we are assigning the articles for reviewing to reviewers. Then after that, after receiving the decisions, uh, editor's decision for publication means peer review decision. We are putting the manuscript for if it is accepted, we are putting it to production level after that to uh, editing procedures. And after arranging all the text and everything, proofreading and finally it is going to publication. Now I will show you like how a person can, uh, if somebody person is a reviewer with us, how the person can uh, able to see the article, how it is coming to the reviewer panel for reviewing. So let me log in into my account. I'm logging as a reviewer. Yeah, so this is a reviewer panel, how it look like so on MPRP manuscript peer review process. Over there, I have managed review articles. Here I'm getting two options, article for review and reviewed articles. In article for review, I am getting three articles for reviewing. Like for example, if I'm clicking on two, if I want to review this article, I'm clicking here and I am getting an option to download the article. I am downloading the article file and here I'm getting the time to choose like in how many days I want to review an article. It totally depends on the availability of reviewer. Like if uh, you, on the basis of your availability, you can choose five to 10 days or zero to five. It's totally up to you. I chose five to 10 days for reviewing this article. Now I am, I'll be reviewing this article and at the end I can add comments from here. Like if I want to uh, accept the paper, if I want to accept paper after minor revision, so this is same, like what screenshot we have attached in the presentation. This is the live uh, version of that particular thing. I can attach my file here, whatever the comments I have given in the paper, then the confidential comments also to the editor, I can give uh, the grammar check. Then this one, does the paper is falling under the journal and you can write if it is okay to publish or if uh, it is like uh, revised. And you can submit your valuable feedback like this to 
the journal handler. So this feedback will be coming to the journal handler and they'll be taking appropriate action after receiving this feedback. So after that, you'll be getting a mail on your email ID, like thank you for uh, your amazing contribution. You can forward the same mail to reviews at revoscience.com after proper verification web of science. If you have your active web of science account, web of science will be adding a credit point to your account. Then in your review dashboard, you the main important thing is like edit subject category option. You must need to add your subject category because it is very important on the basis of that only we can assign the article to any person. Okay, so this is very important thing to add. Uh, you can edit your profile on the basis of like uh, whatever your uh, what are the field it is asking. So after receiving a request to review your office, we will be uh, like uh, uh, we'll be checking your, all of your credentials and then we'll be uh, activating your account from the backend. Uh, now coming back to our presentation. Uh, one more researchers profile like researchers profile is a new product of IP innovative we recently launched two three months back it is a profile or it is a kind of social media platform for reviewers or for any researcher but people can join on this profile and can update uh, your records like you can update your uh, publication records in a single platform it is very helpful in maintaining institutional academic activity publication involvement as an author as a reviewer and editor to collect and maintain records so the website link is also given here like researchersprofile.com at the end of the session also will be sharing the presentation with you uh, from there also you can log into researcher profile and can get benefit or can avail benefit out of it so from this particular researchers profile you can track the citations you can like uh, free sharing of the article it is providing and it is providing you the uh, option to uh, share the articles so thank you so much now i want to thank all the attendees in the meeting your presence was not only uh, like uh, putting the efforts to us but it was significantly contributed to the success of the event as well i want to extend my appreciation for your active engagement during the presentation uh, after this event you will be getting a mail regarding the resources for this presentation or i can say resources for becoming a peer reviewer along with the feedback form Kindly fill that, we'll be happy to listen from you so that we can enhance and update ourselves on our next event. Now we'll be giving some time for the question and answer session. So uh, we have some questions and answers in the QA session. So let's start with the question now. So we have a question like receiving again and again, uh, one person was saying for uh, conflict of interest. So I request Dr. Satish Mothu to answer the question, please. Uh, what is conflict of interest again? And a uh, uh, few example of conflict of interest in peer reviewing. Yeah, I just uh, replied to some of the questions regarding conflict of interest. And again, I'm. Uh, we also had a poll question to uh, stress upon this conflict of interest part only because uh, it happens. Uh, it is first a declaration on the part of a peer reviewer to uh, disclose whether he has any conflict of interest in doing the peer review. It means like he has any association with one of the presenting authors if it is uh, open or a single blinded peer review. And if he is in any way uh, knows the author or the research team or the institution or has in any connection to the authors, then that is a conflict of interest or if you are uh, having any biased opinion on the subject that you are trying to peer review because you might have some research work which is totally against the results and uh, uh, you have some uh, work that is totally uh, against that of the work that you are reviewing and your uh, pre-exposure to that knowledge is having some influence on the uh, objective peer review that is being done it has to be also disclosed because it might affect the objectivity of the peer review so uh, it depends upon the relation of the author to the authors or the content that is being peer reviewed the conflict of interest matters uh, one more question we have received in the comment section like what is the eligibility for joining as a reviewer this slide we have explained in the presentation as well but sir we want uh, one more time the answer of this question what is the basic minimum eligibility criteria one must follow to join as a reviewer 
yeah the first and uh, foremost slide of this presentation was that uh, so what was the eligibility to become a peer reviewer first it is your uh, basic expertise in the field and your interest you need the time to make a quality peer review and uh, you must be updated in the field to know what is uh, to be published in the next stages of uh, advancement of the field that you are working on so these are all the basic requirements it doesn't uh, matter like you need so and so years of experience to become a peer reviewer it is nothing nothing like that it is your peer uh, it is your uh, sheer interest and dedication and uh, your motivation to influence the field in some way possible that is all that matters yes thank you so much uh, dr sapir sir for giving the answer one more question i can see again and again in the comment section that uh, will you be able to get the ppt yeah definitely as i mentioned in my words as well after the session we'll be mailing you the presentation of this particular uh, session and resources also for becoming a peer reviewer feedback form also and the link to download the certificate as well so one more question is there if orchid id is not there will one be able to register the profile for reviewer no actually orchid id is mandatory from our end if somebody want to join as a reviewer somebody uh, want to join as a editor uh, so it is very important field we required uh, orchid id is very easy to generate you can just simply google on orchid uh, google uh, orchid and you can create your profile over there it will ask you normal things like email id your background where you are working so all such things it will be asking and it will be giving you a unique identity a unique digit so that will be applicable uh, for joining as a reviewer a few more questions are there which we can see in the comment box just wait a second Uh, somebody is asking now. The journal asked the author to give a disclosure on the utilization of AI tools in the manuscript preparation. So I request Dr. Uma Hariharan, please answer the question uh, in the comment section. Uh, you see, uh, this artificial intelligence is something which is very recent. When we started uh, doing the reviewing process, this was not existed, right? So uh, now with the advent of artificial, artificial intelligence, it has been projected that peer reviewers will go out of fashion. That is what uh, it has been projected. But yes, the use of artificial intelligence during the conduct of the study or during the peer review process by the reviewer, if it is there, has to be disclosed. So that is what uh, uh, I think our journal also needs to incorporate uh, in their uh, pro forma when it is uh, there for the online submission process for the authors. That a question, a single lined question can be added that whether you have used artificial intelligence for generating the uh, results and uh, other aspects of the study which you have done. So if yes, then it has to be mentioned that is it we actually at this point in time do not know whether artificial intelligence used studies uh, are relevant to us or not but yes it has to be mentioned and the uh, statement has to be given in that particular uh, aspect okay this was a nice nice answer to the question one more question i can see in the comment box uh, mostly we suggest faculty who working in our institution as faculty but they are uh, our college then can we suggest some reviewer from our article if the journal ask name from author so uh, dr satish mutu i request you to answer this question yeah usually okay. some of the journals will ask for suggested peer reviewers so at that time you are supposed to give either your colleague or some person that is known to you so that is totally against the conflict of interest concept that i was talking to but you must make sure that, uh, like you must be uh, known that those persons will not be receiving your manuscripts. That is just used to build the peer reviewer uh, portfolio of the journal only. And it is not directly sent to all the suggested peer reviewers, whatever uh, the names that you're suggesting. So it doesn't come under conflict of interest and that's how it works. Uh, one more question is there. Could you give an example for constructive criticism? Uh, Dr. Roma, I request you to please answer the question. Yeah. 
So this is actually a personal experience about uh, constructive uh, criticism when I myself, you know, submitted an article. Um, I had submitted an article wherein uh, during uh, anesthesia, when the patient was intubated, the surgeon was using a saw inside the oral cavity. And because of the saw to remove the tumor, instead of that, he used the saw to cut the tube. So that was quite a catastrophic situation and we managed the case and we reintubated the patient and the patient was managed and I uh, submitted a case report of that. So I gave the title uh, that uh, cutting of endotracheal tube during surgery as a title. So the peer reviewer who assessed uh, my article wanted something more catchy so that my article not only gets accepted but also has a wider outreach to the audience. That is more and more people are interested to read. You see how a journal will develop uh, its popularity by more and more readership uh, opportunities and more and more people willing to you know uh, read the articles which are there. So he, he suggested a very unique and a very catchy title to me in a very constructive way. He said, he, he, uh, he, he or she, I don't know who was the peer reviewer, he wrote a uh, very beautifully uh, done and a very challenging case. Uh, kindly think of an alternative catchy title which can improve the readability of the case report. And he gave two, three suggestions. And one of the suggestions was what to do when a surgeon cuts off the oxygen supply during surgery. So, I mean, he made uh, the situation sound dramatic so that anybody who comes across uh, this particular article will be inclined to read it. And uh, I got a lot of uh, appreciation from my colleagues that was very early in my career regarding the case as well as the way in which I presented. Otherwise, uh, in most situations, uh, it, a normal looking title would have just uh, been, you know, uh, written off, ah, thik, yeah, this is another article, this is another accepted article, just like that. So the way you give a criticism, he did not like the title which I wrote, but he was very diplomatic. And at the same time, he made the right suggestion so that I take it positively and improve upon myself and uh, get my article published. This is a constructive criticism. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Umarian, for this wonderful answer. So I think now we are having one or two more questions in the comment section. So one is, uh, many time a reviewer accept immediately, but unfortunately don't get back in time. Okay, so in this case, if a particular reviewer is not able to review the article in the duration, it is important to inform the journal handler, like uh, we'll be waiting for your comment. If you are accepting the invitation, it's your duty to finish the review process within the timeline if you are not able to do so you can contact the editorial office that due to some other engagements you'll not be able to review the article so that in the meantime we'll be assigning that particular article to some other reviewers so in this manner we can save the time and can lead to quality publication and timely publication as well so that was i think uh, we have answered all the questions regarding rest questions if somebody uh, like if we were not able to answer any of the questions we'll be looking for your questions, for your suggestions, for your feedback in the mail session, you can mail us your queries and questions. We'll be answering uh, soon by Monday. Uh, once again, few, few you. questions are few questions on uh, are on MPRP. Actually, Shrasti has given a very uh, detailed and explained about the MPRP. Uh, but a few questions like if someone is uh, or, uh, is a reviewer for one journal uh, on of MPRP, how can he apply for another journal? Uh, so you must contact to our editorial office that is support at the rate mp dot uh, rp dot in and. Uh, they can activate the journal of your uh, of your own expertise more than one journal you can become a reviewer in this case but you must have to update your subject specialty expertise as uh, Shasti has explained about the keywords of your specialty on the MPRP so we can uh, uh, I mean uh, from our uh, office and we can activate the uh, few journals for the review and another question 
again for the uh, it is again for the MPRP uh, that uh, few peoples are having trouble to access the article. Yes, Rashti has informed you about uh, the timeliness or time uh, frame you selected. Is if you are selected zero to five days and you are not able to ex uh, uh, um, I mean conduct review on that particular uh, uh, manuscript, then it will uh, vanish from your dashboard automatically and uh, it has to be on, uh, assigned to the another reviewer at the, uh, after that particular procedure so uh, if that's why you are not able to uh, access the article after the time is the uh, completed on uh, the uh, frame which you had selected so these are few questions about MPRP and for MPRP and other training and support purpose you can visit our 24 by 7 peer review uh, support and training program on our website and on MPRP also we had updated all the FAQs about the same so thank you uh, okay so coming back to our presentation just give me a minute uh, we'll be looking for your valuable suggestions and feedback. We welcome again your feedback and we appreciate your time and insights. Thank you for your time and considerations. And uh, regarding the rest, like you can check our updates or uh, uh, what's coming next. Uh, our editor's training and support program is also our next training in this session, which we are going to conduct by the end of this month. So uh, I welcome you all again to the next session regarding the guidelines. You can visit our website and must read our reviewer guidelines before joining as a reviewer for any particular journal. And researchers profile, as I mentioned in my earlier slide as well, you must visit our researchers profile and must use it. Now, before ending the session, I am very delighted to have two amazing personalities with us in this meeting. And I request you on the behalf of IP Innovative Training and Support to accept plaque of appreciation for your fabulous presentation and enlightening us with the uh, great feast of knowledge on peer review. Thank you so much, Dr. Satish Muthu, sir, for your valuable uh, like presentation and for your valuable guidance. And once again, thank you so much, Dr. Uma uh, Hari Haran, for your valuable uh, like presentation and for the suggestions, whatever you have suggested in the, the whole presentation. And you gave a very amazing uh, opportunity or you gave an amazing idea or uh, how to review an article, the person who are joining new uh, as a reviewer. So uh, it was an honor to have you all in this meeting and I hope to see you again in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I'm indeed grateful and indebted to Innovative Publication, to Ms. Uh, Shrashti, Dr. Muthu, and of course, uh, our loving Nikita ma'am for uh, all the efforts which they have put in. It is really commendable, excellent uh, organization. I must really appreciate all your efforts. Great. Thank you, madam. Thank you very much. They, uh, we need a support from every uh, research populace. So thank you all. And uh, you you did a great presentation, the uh, chat boxes. And uh, after this event, I know that the our email also flooded with the, the number of feedbacks, uh, the great feedbacks for you. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you to all the attendees. We'll be looking for your collaboration with us as peer reviewers and we'll be waiting for your feedback and you can download your certificate in the mail which you'll be receiving after this event thank you thank you thank you bye bye, bye. bye. bye.